What's going on Papa Fam? Welcome back to another video. Today you're going to learn all about class-based components versus functional components, which one you should use and why. Row the intro. This video was made possible by our amazing friends over at Skillshare. Not only has your boy Papa React been able to hook you up with one month completely free, but you can also go ahead and check out my entire React Basics 101 course, which has this lesson plus many other React Basics lessons inside. Check this out. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions of people come together to take the next step in their creative journey. The thing I love about Skillshare is that there are no ads. They're always launching new premium classes and they also recommend really interesting classes. So before you know it, I'm actually no longer watching TV or Netflix. All I do is watch Skillshare while I'm actually eating my food. Most classes are under 60 minutes, so they should be able to fit any schedule, whether you're super busy or you've got a little bit more time on your hands. I've actually gone ahead and dropped the React Basics 101 entire class on Skillshare. The first 1000 people to use the link in the description are going to get a free month worth of premium Skillshare and you're going to be able to with that access the react basics which i've uploaded on top of that you're going to get access to thousands and thousands of courses available on skillshare's platform i've actually been checking out a amazing video editing class at the moment by ali abdal where i was actually able to find out how i could use my ipad to add animated handwriting into my videos to level up my production value and now i'm making the best use out of my ipad as well as leveling up my final cut production game so this is just an example of the amazing value that I've got since I've signed up at Skillshare. And if you guys want to go ahead and benefit from this just like I have, then go ahead and remember the first 1,000 people to go ahead and grab that link are going to get one free month of Skillshare premium, which means that you can access my React Basics 101 class. It's completely free. You have nothing to lose. And then after that, you can go ahead and continue if you're enjoying what you see on Skillshare. Today, you're going to learn all about why we need to know about class-based components as well as the newer functional components. Now, if you're wondering, do I need to know both or why do I need to know this in the first place? Well, it's super important because when you go into a company, it's most likely that some of their code will be owed and therefore they may be using traditional class-based component code, which you're gonna need to understand. So at the end of this video, if you understand class-based and functional components, smash the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe and bell notification icon. And without further ado, guys, enjoy the video, Papa Fam, let's go. So starting off, when we do create React app, we get this starting template where we get the functional component app, which is built for us. Now you would have reached this point if you had done the previous lessons. So at this point, all I want you guys to go ahead and do is start up your app by running npm start, and then it will go ahead, spin up on localhost 3000. Okay, so once you're at this point, this firstly is something called a functional component okay so this is a functional component now why is it a functional component because it's literally a function that returns something okay so that's all a functional component is it's a function that returns something for us okay so it's extremely simple and it's pretty pretty easy to write right now if we want to write this same component as a class-based component now it gets a little bit more tricky right so what we need to do is go ahead and I'm going to use ES snippets, which we've installed in the previous lesson. And I'm going to go ahead and do React class based component. So I'm going to do React CC. And then it goes ahead and creates a class based component. Okay. Now inside of here, if I want to do the same thing, I can go ahead and say hello. Oops. I can say hello world. Save it. And we get the exact same outcome. So you see what's simpler? This or this you see in theory this is actually a lot simpler guys now because it's very straightforward it, a function has some kind of input and some kind of output the input would be the props and the output being whatever is returned from that function which is a lot simpler in my opinion so imagine we had a function and this function had some kind of input right so and then we had the function here so this is our function and this is called app okay and then what we do is the app does some logic. It has some UI rendering logic, and then it simply outputs something. This is a functional component. It's as simple as that. Now, what are the, what is the input here? The input could be props. Okay. And the output would be the JSX. 
right so it's pretty straightforward and and that's really as complicated as it gets when we're talking about functional components you want to use capital letters whenever you do this so we have an input of props it we have some ui rendering logic going on and then it returns some jsx so this right here would be your jsx that gets returned okay so very very straightforward now everything kind of gets a little bit different when we move over to class-based uh, components so I'm going to go ahead and move this from the screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo what we previously had. So we have previously had this hello world, but a class-based component. Now to get it in the exact same format, I'm going to go ahead and say export um, default app. So there you go. It's a very similar format now to what we had previously, right? So if I was to go ahead and put this side by side in a comparison, and I was to go ahead and change this to JavaScript React, there we go. And I was going to go ahead and say RFCE. Now what we would have is this essentially. So we have the same app on each side. So I'm gonna go ahead and break this down. So hello world. And this is actually a very simple ex way to see the differences between the two components, okay? So here you can see class app extends component and here you can just see function app, right? So here we need all these extra things. Now notice the first thing is class, right? Which is why in fact in our JSX we now use class name because class is reserved and it's used to define class components. Now, that's all cool, but again, functional component is pretty simple, right? Functional component is seems like a lot easier right way, right? So you might also notice the render function. So in a functional component, we can simply return our JSX. It's as simple as that. In a class-based component, we actually need a render function, which then has the ability to return the JSX. Inside the render function, we can do a bunch of things. We can have console logs. Um, you can have a bunch of JavaScript executed in here. And this is going to run every time the component re-renders. So that's another topic for a, a later lesson about component life cycles and all of those um, things that can get interesting inside of React. So here we have the example of the same component, okay? Now, how do we go ahead and consume these? It's the exact same. So if we go to where the app is used, we can see here inside of our index.js so i'm going to go ahead and close that one now so we can see here inside of index.js regardless of if it's a functional component or a class-based component as long as the component is exported everything is okay right you just need to import the component regardless if it's functional or class-based and just use it as following right now components are a little bit more clever than that right they're a little bit smarter than that and the reason why we couldn't use functional components before is because we couldn't support something called state now state is something very very interesting and we're going to be talking about that in the next lesson and we're also going to be covering something called props and these are the two fundamentals that you're going to need to know about to really master react and get your hands into the more complicated things right you need to be able to go ahead and understand state and props to a very high level to, so that every because everything else essentially builds up from those two fundamental points. So moving back over to functional components, right? I'm going to go ahead and again show you how would we change this into a functional component without our handy little snippets feature. So the first thing I would do is I would go ahead and change this actually become a variable without this extends component stuff going on because again class-based components can be a bit confusing when you're learning out so i'm going to go ahead and get rid of that i'm going to change this to const or we can make it a function and i'll show you what i was about to do there so we're going to do this function and remember we no longer have a render block so i can go ahead and get rid of that and there you go i no longer need this import and our code is a lot more simple so you can see the process of changing it from a class-based component to a functional component is actually taking away from the code which means it's actually simplifying a lot of the code right now you're probably wondering why didn't we do this in the beginning and there is a reason for that it's because functional components didn't support state right so you couldn't do that until the entry of react hooks now another key difference between functional and class-based components is how we consume props and how we use state so these are two fundamentals and if you do want to learn more about these concepts you can go ahead and check out my entire react basics 101 course the link is in the description or check out the videos which are going to be popping out right about now so you can go ahead and check those videos out but we're going to quickly explain and compare the two differences let's start off with our 
state. So on the left hand side, we have a functional component. And here you can see we have three pieces of state, right? We've initialized it with the use state hook, and it's very clean. We have each individual variable with its own setter function, okay? So that means each method can only affect this variable, and each one has a default value that is given at the start. Now, you can see that when we use this state, all we have to do is say, my name is name. I am this years old, and I am a is male and then we've got a ternary operator which says if you're male it's male or otherwise female right so it's very very clean code all you have to do is use the variable name once you set up your piece of state let's compare this to a class-based component so on the right hand side you can see here we have our traditional class-based layout but we have a different new introduction here the constructor now I'll explain the props in just a second, but here what we have to do is if we want to make use of state, then what we actually have to do is we have to prepare the state in advance. Now we do that inside the constructor, which is where we initialize the class itself. So in this case, we have a constructor which takes props as its argument. And as you can see here, we've got this dot state. And this dot state, we essentially pass a massive object to it, okay? Inside this object, we don't have previous setter functions as we saw a minute ago. We instead have the variables as key value pairs. So here we have name with empty value, age 100, is male true, okay? Now, when we come to consume this, we typically have a different approach with class-based components. Instead, now, we have to say this dot state dot the variable name which is a little bit more of an extra bit of wording that we have to add on now there is a little trick to this whereby we have destructuring which you will see in a lot of production environments you'll see the traditional trick is something like this right where we go ahead and have something like this where we have const name age and ismail equals this dot state right and what this means is that you can then get rid of the this dot state because uh, you've now destructured the variables out of the main this dot state variable okay so that's you that's one way you can combat it however you can see here we have a lot of extra code right and if we ever want to change this we actually have to use something called this dot set state but we're not going to get into that today but i'll give you a quick example if you did want to change it you can go ahead and say this dot set state and you pass in new key value pairs for the different things that you would want to modify so if i wanted to change a name here i'd type in sunny now obviously don't put it here it's going to render forever but in this case that is an example of how you would change the variable however in functional components you can see we have a nice little setter function which is specifically for that variable whereas in this case we have this kind of volatile approach where we can pass in an uh, object of key value pairs to change the state. So that is state in a nutshell, okay? If you want to know more, check out those videos previously mentioned. The next thing that we need to know is props. Now, props in a functional component, very simple. They're simply a property that gets passed in or an, as an argument. In this case, we've got function app props. And then we, if we want to consume it, we literally say, I am feeling props dot emotion right so this could be i am feeling happy i am feeling sad but this would basically be the prop that we pass into the component right so you can see it's simple we just say props dot our variable now if we move over to our class based component you can see that as part of the constructor we do pass in props and if you've ever done any kind of class based component programming before you'll know something called inheritance and what is essentially happening here is whenever we have a super call what it's doing is it's passing props up to the parent constructor so what this is doing is this, this is passing up to the parent and which parent are we talking about well we're extending the component class right so what this is actually doing is it will go inside the component class and that has a constructor which takes these props so we're essentially just passing it up the tree okay and that allows us to then use them so we have to make sure we do that and once we've done that if we want to consume them we go ahead and then we say i am feeling this dot props dot emotion so you can see in class-based components we have the this dot props and this dot state and that's because this is essentially pointing towards the instance of that component and that's why we need that in this case but you can go ahead and combat that here by saying something like this you can have emotion equals this dot props and then you can go ahead and actually get rid of it like so okay now that is another way to combat it however as you can see a lot more code a lot more cumbersome this is why we naturally prefer functional components they're very clean they're very to the point and you can actually clean up the functional component even more here 
where we have the props at the top, we can actually do ES6 destructuring and put in some curly brackets and actually destructure the variable that we want. So in this case, if I go ahead and hit save, you've got the emotion, which is getting destructured out of the props. And then we can go ahead and use it as so. Right, so we have single variable names here. Very, very clean stuff. And if you had several others, you can go ahead and literally enter the names here. So if you had something like, um, let's just imagine you had... Um, Let's just imagine you had year being passed in. So like if you're in year five, year six, you can go ahead and do that. If you're in a school, for example. And then if you wanted the rest of the props, you can just go ahead and do dot, dot, dot props. And that would essentially have pull out the emotion, the year, and the rest of the props would be pulled into this variable as so. I hope you've enjoyed today's session. This has been a really, really fun video to make because for me, it's one of the most important concepts that you're going to need to know because when you go into a production environment, chances are it's not going to be written in the most modern way, right? So it may not be all written in functional components. You would still have be, or you'd still be modifying some class-based components. Now, if you do want to learn more about this, for example, class-based components have lifecycle methods, whereas we use the use effect hook inside of a functional component feel free to check out my use effect video over here if you've enjoyed this video smash the thumbs up button hit the subscribe and bell notification icon to get more videos just like this and drop a comment if you learned something new until next time guys i will see you in the next one Peace.